Sometimes I wish that I could, like, green screen my room because I feel like you got you guys can see a little too much when I do the big screen. Like, I don't need you guys to see, like, specifically, like, the, the fiber and the vitamin C pills I, I bought from Costco. Like, that's a little too intimate, but it's okay. It's <laughs> not the worst thing I've revealed about myself on stream. Anyway, in December, when I was doing the layout and designs for my store, because I've been planning to make an online store for a while. What I heard people do is that they outsource it to manufacturers. And I've done businesses before. I've sold stuff on eBay, like secondhand. I've made things and sold them on Etsy. But it's the first time I've design something, send it to a manufacturer, and then they send it back to me, then I do the shipping. Because I do have a Redbubble, but obviously that's a, lot, that's a lot more hands off. So I was looking at a lot of different, like, merchandising manufacturing companies. I know a lot of people use Alibaba, but the one I had heard the most about, because some of my mutuals were using it, and they had the most, like, accessible website, was Vogue Race. I actually, I, I know people who um, mix and match with manufacturers, like they do certain things with Vogue Race, certain things with Alibaba. I know Alibaba is better for like custom things because there's a lot more freedom. I know people usually do figurines and plushies there. I see a lot of other artists using these manufacturing stuff and a lot of mutuals use them, but I feel like not a lot of them talk about the process that goes into them. And just in case people are interested, I'm not just shilling for them, I swear to God, this is me as saying, saying I am walking through my process because it helps, you know, it helps me think. And also, if, it, if this is helpful to you, hopefully that works out. Regardless, Vogue reached out to me and the deal was that they could give me a hundred or two dollars worth of coupons for the site and I can go and pick little items which I can, you know, incorporate my little designs and then order them and the only thing I would have to pay for is shipping. And luckily shipping wasn't too bad. There were some things that I bought that were not included with the, with the discount. Uh, sample boxes. So I specifically got their keychain sample box and their sticker sample box because they apparently... Uh, here's, the, here's the stickers. Hello. Even though they don't have your designs, you're still able to see them in your hands. This fun sticker sheet. They also have like cards, which is really cool. I actually, I do find that cool. Um, because it's a, it's a very specific material, the cards. It's a... It's, what is it? It's like a... It's, it's like that laminate feel. Dandies completely slipped my mind because I always felt that the more 3D, like bulky items tend to be more expensive and tend to be less accessible. I've been hunting in the wild and I've been looking at other people's stores and merchandise and a lot of people have little like standee stuff. So how it works is that this is the stand. It has a little little Lego hole and you put and you pop that in. I'm always fascinated by a lot of design things, but specifically merchandise design is such a fascinating thing to me because I don't know how people come up with this kind of stuff. That they decided to make a whole genre of, hey, we can make your acrylic little guy as long as you design the little pattern for the bag and tell us which which sparkle shaker charms. The charms that are a bit more complex than just like a 2D acrylic are actually the ones I'm most interested in because those are the ones that seem the most fun to design. So a shaker charm would be this. Basically, if, as you can see, there's the back layer, the front layer, and there's a space in between where little acrylic charms go in. The stuff like this is so exciting to me because it's sort of this weird in-between of like graphic design and toy design in that you are generally limited by the medium. Like you're not making a completely 3D thing, but you're still working with the possibilities of 2D. And there's so many, I don't know, there's just so much potential. So, uh, collaboration. I made keychains of, uh, if you guys remember, the little chibi uh, Mario princesses. And I did not, um, include the outline of this. All I did was make this transparent 
included the little uh, flowers and whatnot, and they automatically did the little like two millimeter thing around. And most manufacturers I see tend to do that. They also do the, you know, putting the hole at the top. Generally, um, if you send them a design, they will do that for you. Unless you send them a specific design where you're like, I want the hole to be like over here or something. And then, and I find that very, very nice. So we have, we have my Daisy, we have Rosalina and we have Peach and here they are. I do think these are a bit long when it comes to keychains. Cause I think when it comes to keychains, there's a certain like, you know, length and width they should generally adhere to. But this is like, it's really skinny and it's very tall. I think there's also a good balance to be struck when it comes to the size of keychains. So I wanted to test basically all of the keychains that I had an interest in. So what you just saw for the princesses was just the acrylic. So this is acrylic, double-sided, but it's a dangle keychain, which I've seen a lot of unique iterations on a design like this. Because I was just looking at designs that were- Oh my god, it looks like I'm I'm doing Gabby on like one of those medieval like torture devices. Very nice. Ultimately, this is the same, um, kind of the same problem with the Princess Peach one. This is very big. I can see this hanging from like a backpack or a bag. A bit too big for a keychain. And also, as you can see, it's very tall, not very wide. So generally, when you order something, even if you intend to order just one, there is a set minimum of how many you can get. So for the princesses, there was a minimum of three acrylic keychains I had to buy. So for them, luckily, I was able to submit different designs for the, each of them. I have three Gabbies. <laughs> so um, maybe in the future when I have like shipping and everything sorted out, we can do like a fun little giveaway because I don't need this many Gabbies. I have three of them. Look, they're chilling in there. The last keychain I want to show you, and the one I was most excited about, is because... So I'm going to open Psy first and show for the first time. So my idea with these keychains, and don't ask me why I started with the Powerpuff Girls, they're like, you know, they're like little baby locusts in my brain. For some reason, I know a lot of people have different styles of making keychains. A lot of them have like you know a lot of them are just like a person standing or a person like being held by the shirt or a person falling a lot of them have a theme something that i have always wanted to do even when i was in middle school and i was sketching up in my notebook little steven universe charms is to have keychain designs where characters would be sitting inside something but i like the ones that feel like I am holding like a little terrarium. <laughs> I know a lot of people have done really creative stuff with keychains online. There are a lot of Pokemon stuff I've seen or like Animal Crossing ones where the whole keychain is like an environment or like a cage or well, not a cage, that seems kind of dark, but it's a whole thing and the character is inside of it. So it feels like you're like carrying this little habitat. Not only that would be a nice design challenge because ultimately I am that would limit me to characters sitting in a confined space, so they're all would be sitting in some way. But it also creates like a kind of theme, you know, it, it makes a visual theme. The background I decided would be the little heart that they have in the background for of the little ending screen. And I made sure to make different colored ones for all the girls because hell yeah. I wish I could instill the experience in these keychains of you having a little goldfish and shaking it in the bag. Why are you sleeping? But but the the guy is just fine. When it comes to these little characters sitting in a frame, not only do you have the 3D effect of them being enclosed in this environment, but you can also have their little, you know, they're interacting with the environment as if they were actually sitting in there. Blossom, for example, you can see that her hair flattens here as if she's actually like sitting there and like the bow up there. Mostly I did that because if I drew the bow like, you know, as it actually was like here, then you would have like a the silhouette for the keychain would be up here and that's not very fun. Like this, for example, this sticks out of the heart and that's fine. 
But you don't want to ruin the silhouette up here. You want to make sure the silhouette up here is, you know, normal. This is not the exact art I sent. This is actually a slightly polished version. Um, the art I sent did not have shading and um, the little highlights here. What I specifically want to do with the 3D is to make it so... I've seen keychains where the front layer is the person or like the thing in the foreground and the back layer is the thing in the background. And so with the princesses, for example, it's just one layer. But this is how it came back. So... I don't know if you guys see this, but there is a slight shadow effect with the layering because this is actually two layers with the character in the front and the heart in the back. So you, as you can see, there's a shadow there. And for the background, I just did a flat, like not double-sided, but it's as if she's actually, you know, it creates a shadow like depth effect. And that's exactly what I was looking for. And I'm really happy with how this turned out. Look at that. I'm sorry my camera quality is so bad. Ultimately, you have the hard silhouette, you have the little thing sticking out, and in the back, it's just the heart with her little legs sticking out. When I talked about the height and the width problem here, not a problem here. It's all contained, everything's in there. This is the kind of thing they'll send you before they make it. You you order it and then they get back to you and they say, oh, you want this for the keychain design, you want this for the front layer, this for the back layer, and this is for the back. And then together it'll look like this. So this is like an example of a proof they'll send you. So it starts at $2.99. So I did double board front side epoxy. And if you're wondering what epoxy is, don't worry. I also didn't know what it was. If you've ever had acrylic keychains, it's just very simple, like flat, pancake both sides but with epoxy instead of being flat it's like rounded out so it creates a little like 3d effect like if you had a character that was front side epoxy then the front side would feel like oh like it would be more smoothed out doing epoxy is slightly more expensive but it does make a nice effect. This is way more complicated than I expected it to be. Yeah, it's a good thing I'm making these and not you, huh? So one thing I have heard about Vogue Race that um, a friend of mine who does some work with Vogue Race, they don't do merchandising full time, but they do do it um, for a little bit. They did recommend Vogue Race to me because it is easy and accessible, and I agree. Um, it's definitely... <laughs> It's definitely a little easier than reaching out to like, in, like picking a merchant from Alibaba, admittedly, because Vogue Race has their own website and everything. However, the downside that comes with a site like Vogue Race is that because it is so accessible, it's going to be very popular. I know a lot of people who use Vogue Race. There is going to be more of a longer wait period from order, you know, to proof to the actual shipment coming. And that was something I was told in advance. And I was like, okay, that, that makes sense. In order to use this more accessible, more user-friendly service, more popular one, you're going to have to contend with the fact that other people are going to be using it and there might be delays, etc. So I did make this order early January, like around the, the second week of January. And I've just gotten them now, the second week of February. Now that is not too bad of a difference, but I also believe Vogue Race had like a Lunar New Year vacation, so that might be a part of it, so. I was also interested in standees and pins, however I did not get samples of those because when it comes to keychains, usually the minimum is like, like three to five or whatever. When it comes to pins, <laughs> Because they're easier to make, and this includes prints and stickers as well, the minimum is like, it's like 20. And personally, even though I am interested in making pins, to make a rough draft and to have just like 20 of those fuckers being sent to me, I was like considering not committing to that. Yes, that is the unfortunate downside to working with manufacturers, is that when it comes to the things that are easier to make and that are cheaper, such as like things on paper or pins, um, you cannot just 
be sent like a few and be like, okay, I looked at these. Um, they will send you like a ton because they have to make their minimum, and that's understandable. Something that I was sent a lot of, and that I was excited for, was... I believe these are 50 sheets of Kirby stickers. I basically took the old file, um, made it as transparent as best as I, as I could, and then spaced them apart as much as I could so that there would be no overlap. And luckily, when it comes to stickers and all kinds of prints, um, manufacturers will send you proofs where you can see the little outlines of everyone for approval. So there won't be a situation where you send them your designs and then you get them back and the stickers are overlapping and it's all like messy. Usually there will be a step in between where they'll be like, is this okay? And you'll be like, okay. Um, very, very basic uh, sticker sheet. And I was content to order the 50 minimum for this because firstly there's no going wrong with these i'm not gonna lie like even if i don't like sell them sell them um they would be just fun to just like have <laughs> i'm not gonna lie I i've always been a sticker fiend so i personally do have a weakness for small and many when it comes to stickers so this is i think this is perfectly acceptable i could see this being printed in a bigger size if i were to sell them but for this um, I love the 3D stickers. I do too. Color-wise, I'm happy to say that for the most part, um, the only change that I can detect from image to printer is that they came out like a bit darker than I thought. And I think it's because it's not just darkness. I think they just come out a bit more saturated. So obviously when you're working with things that are going to be printed, you want to convert that shit to CMYK. And that's what I did for basically all of my things. Things are a lot more vivid as um, as charms than, than you would expect. Overall, color-wise, I think they did turn out good. That is meant to be Prince Fluff. That is a Waddle Dee. That is Marks. And I believe that is Meta Knight? Yes, that's Meta Knight. Because they have like slightly different expressions. So the last thing I want to show are prints. And when it comes to prints, there's also a minimum. I sent them two potential prints. This is front side matte film. So one thing that I <laughs> had to learn is the difference between um, different prints um, materials. This is the page where you can, ch you can choose the size, you can choose glossy, matte, illusion. So for Vograce, and I didn't choose this effect for any of my um, charms, but you can always add a little like holographic, you know, like rainbow sparkle patterns to your stuff. I personally didn't because I wanted to keep them in their neutral form to have as samples just to see. I basically chose A4, like the smallest size, front size, matte film. So like this. This is the smallest size they have, and yet it's bigger than like a, a piece of paper. This is remarkably big, but anyway. Guys, look. Like, it actually feels pretty good to, to the touch. Like the back is like a bit of a, like a plastic, almost like a sticky, not sticky, but like, you know, like firm texture, but the front is like very glossy and nice. And again, the colors came out like more saturated than I thought, though to be fair, I am not used to my art being printed out rather than shown in beams of light on a screen. So that just may be- that just might be how my art style just translates to the physical realm. What I'm trying to say is that when I drew this, I did not have product in mind. I had, I want to do what I want in mind. But when it comes to keychains, obviously, you have to design that with a bit more of a general audience in mind. And with that, I have to... When I'm making humanized versions of characters, it's good to make them as recognizable as possible. So that is why when it comes to this blossom as opposed to that blossom, I decided to stick more to the canon like translation of them as human rather than my specific interpretation. And that's generally how I'm going to go for my um, designs. The second one, which is more of an illustration, and which probably took more money to print because it's a whole thing. Um, Portal! Look at that! 
this this is like a this is a whole ass illustration and what's what's fun about this one is that when i was drawing it i made it so in a way that it's sort of like in a classic portal way you can flip it and it still sort of works but yeah portal i'm actually really happy about this and how it turned out You always have the potential to make the same things again. You just have to put yourself in the same mind. You can do it, guys. I believe in you. <laughs> the sticker sample box, for example. For ex sample? Is that why they call it a sample? Did the word sample come from example? Putting things away because I have a lot of things. Oh, I'm a dummy. Am I a dummy? I ordered this sample box, right? And there was another sample option I chose of the sticker sample box. Yo, guess what was in the bigger sample box? I... Uh... You know what? To keep me sane, I'm going to pretend that these are, like, different boxes of stickers and that my purchase was made soundly. Fucking idiot. <laughs>